So we st we're in Tom's studio. So what I want to, to do now, uh, let me begin this video, which I already thought that I had finished, and I shot it without actually having Tom's studio running. So what I want to do is I want to uh, I want to show or to see that given any graph of a function we can introduce another function okay another function so we have a function let's say little let's say a function g of x which we are going to be calling y informally so we can actually uh, introduce another function and of one more variable and make the first graph, the level curve of the second function. So that's what we want to show. So we begin with a graph of the function that we said was g equals x squared, g of x equals x squared. We made the function, we named the, fun the function informally y equals x squared. Now we know from, you know, from uh, our past uh, that the graph of this function is nothing but this this yellow line here and a point is on this graph if if so, so for example this point is on this graph the graph of y is equal to x squared if when I plug in the value x in this expression here and I square it I get the value for y okay so that that is the graph of the function y is equal to x squared alright so so now what we do is uh, we want to show or we want to, 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 to see that we can introduce a function now. So we're going to introduce the function f of xy and the function f of xy is going to be equal. So we introduce a new variable y and we, we describe this function as being f of xy and the function f of xy is going to be equal to x squared minus y. So I took this y and moved it over here so I actually made this to x squared minus y and there it is. So now I am I I have a new function and if I apply if I look for the level set when f of xy equals zero I end up with a function whose graph looks exactly uh, with a level set whose graph looks exactly like this. Okay? So so there it is. And let's see what happens when and the level set what level set do we get when we set f of xy is equal to two well, when we set f of xy equals to 2, we can actually see that the level set we get is 2 equals to x squared minus y, and then if we write this as y is equal to x squared minus 2, which we can do by using elementary algebra, we actually end up with this graph moved down by 2 units. The, the initial graph, which was over here, now gets pushed down by 2 units, so it becomes, so this is it. Sorry, this is not it right here. This is I have to put a minus 2 here. Let me see if I can actually get this done. Oh, it works now. Isn't that nice? Okay, I got it. So this is the graph of y is equal to x squared minus 2. And, of course, this is just the level set of the function f of x, y equals x squared minus y when, okay, f of x, y is equal to 2. Okay, so now what I did is I wanted to show, I wanted to, to explain or, or, or show that in general, okay, the uh, the level sets of this curve, okay, uh, have the property that they're perpendicular to the gradient of this curve, okay. Of this not this curve, the level sets of this of this function have the property, okay, that they are perpendicular to the gradient of this function f of x y, okay, uh, when we evaluate it at the points on the level curves. Okay, so let, let me actually tell you what I mean by that. So let me compute the gradient of the function um, f of x y is equal to x squared minus y. So the gradient of this function is just going to be the you know vector notation, the partial of f in respect to x, which is of course 2x here, the partial of f in respect to y, which is actually negative 1 here, and then I, I'm going to take the point um, over here, 0, 0, 
Okay, this is the level curve of this function here when f of x y is equal to zero. So I'm taking this point here, zero zero, which is in which is on on this graph here, right? So I'm taking this point and I evaluate it. Okay, I am going to evaluate it. I'm going to take the point zero zero and it, and evaluate the gradient of that point. And what do I end up? I end up with zero negative one. Now this over here turns out to be a vector. So the vector is zero negative one is going to be have x coordinate zero, y coordinate negative one. So it's going to point down in this direction. Now, now I know that the tangent, okay, uh, at this point, okay, for this curve y is equal to x squared, actually points in the direction of the vector i, the vector one zero. So I know that, of course, is something that we know from calculus one, or we could actually just define the line, okay, using the uh, uh, the derivative of the function y is equal to x squared tangent to the at the point zero zero, and then you know take two points of that line and uh, and define the vector, okay, in component form. Uh, uh, that this, that, you know, that the line uh, points in the direction of, all right. So, so we know that v equals to one zero is the direction of this line here, which is tangent to the curve y is equal to x squared at the point zero 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 zero. So now, what I'm going to do to show is to show that this vector here is perpendicular to the vector one zero. Well, to do that, all I have to do is take the dot product, and when I take the dot product, I get a zero plus zero is equal to zero. Therefore, the two vectors, the vector zero negative one and the vector one zero, are actually perpendicular. They are perpendicular vectors. Okay, and that is the story about this. And um, that's what I wanted to to explain. Okay, so so that's the story. And uh, now I can finish this, and so let me stop this program from running.